The Aztecs, powerful, mystical, and doomed a prophecy. To their deities, they built sacred temples, grand pyramids. Here, the enemies of the Aztecs were sacrificed. Their beating hearts cut out and offered to the gods. The greatest of all their temples can now be reconstructed, reimagined in three dimensions. Go. How did the Aztec priests perform their human sacrifices? Why were fewer than a thousand conquistadors able to overpower the vast armies of the Aztecs? One of the great New World civilizations went from dominance to defeat in less than two years. Were all their sacrifices in vain? In Mexico City, the Socolo, or main plaza, is flanked by the central cathedral and the presidential palace. This is the heart of the vast modern city. It was also the heart of a much older city, the ruins of which lie buried beneath the pavements. 500 years ago, this was Tenochtitlan, the capital of the vast Aztec Empire. At the time the Spaniards arrived in 1519, the Aztec Empire was the largest and most powerful empire that Mesoamerica had ever known. At its peak, the empire covered over 200,000 square kilometers and stretched from the Gulf of Mexico to the Pacific. Some six million people lived under Aztec rule, not all of them happily. Around 1350, the Aztecs built their sacred city in the center of Lake Texcoco in the Valley of Mexico. They had been guided to this place by a prophecy. And in the center of Tenochtitlan, they built a massive double pyramid 35 meters high, the Templo Mayor. The Aztec Great Temple was the place where official religion was put on display as it was not possible to put on any place else in the whole empire. The Aztecs believed in many gods, but chief among them was Huitzilopochtli, the god of sun and fire. To nourish and honor the deity, Aztec priests offered blood and human hearts. This ritual was performed so frequently that the steps of the Templo Mayor were permanently stained with blood. Blood was sacred. Blood was the most precious thing that you had to give. And that's why it was uh, so often given to the gods. Sacrifice was necessary in the Aztec view in order to keep the sun rising every day, setting every evening, and coming up again the next day. In other words, it was necessary to sustain life here on Earth. The Spanish conquistadors, led by Hernan Cortes, arrived in 1519. Their Christian sensibilities were offended by the ritual of human sacrifice. Even more appalling were stories of a festival of sacrifice that had taken place just 30 years earlier. In 1487, over a period of just four days, 20,000 men were said to have been brought to the city, laid across an altar, and relieved of their beating hearts. The 1487 event is fascinating because it is the largest human sacrifice ever recorded in history. Is it possible that a sacrifice of this magnitude actually took place? Or did the Spanish exaggerate what they'd been told to demonize the Aztecs and justify their conquest? To this day, there is disagreement among experts. I think that uh, number is completely exaggerated. I, I cannot know how many people were killed, uh, maybe more than 1,000, maybe 2,000. Unsolved History plans to resurrect the ruins of Tenochtitlan. We'll ferret out the truth about the events of 1487. We'll also investigate how a band of Spanish fortune hunters hugely outnumbered, brought down the Aztec armies, and so destroyed a great, though admittedly blood-soaked, culture. We'll gather a multidisciplinary team of experts to go back more than 500 years and unravel the mystery.
anthropologists Francis Padan and Barry Isaac. Native American weapons experts Ross Hazick and Jack Schultz. Designers of artificial torsos Chris Lee and Wesley Fisk. Surgeon Brendan Coventry. and Unsolved History's chief investigator, Daniel Martinez. To understand what really happened at Tenochtitlan, it's important to see the city as it was in its prime under the great ruler priest, Montezuma. In the metropolis of Mexico City lie the remains of Tenochtitlan, the great sacred city of the Aztecs. This is where, in 1519, a band of 500 Spanish fortune hunters led by Hernán Cortés found themselves. They reached the shores of Lake Texcoco after a seven-month trek. Before them lay the gleaming Aztec capital. The conquistadors were stunned. The best descriptions we get are from his soldiers. They were so awestruck that they thought they were in a dream. Linked to shore by a wide, straight causeway was a magnificent island city that rivaled the great capitals of Europe. The skyline was dominated by a great stone pyramid, the Templo Mayor. It was taller than the Cathedral of Seville. It's bigger than anything they'd seen so far in Mexico. And this is a city of 200, 250,000 people, way out of scale of what they'd already encountered. So it must have made your heart stop just for a moment to, to think of what they were actually walking into. Not far from the city, the conquistadors were met by Montezuma, the priest king of the Aztecs. Montezuma, believing that Cortes might be Quetzalcoatl, the Aztec god of wisdom, offered gold and gemstones to the Spanish commander. Cortes tries to embrace Montezuma, and all of Montezuma's high nobles, his aides, push Cortes back. This is inappropriate. This is, this, is, this is not right. You can't do this. He's the most powerful man in their known world. Both men represented powerful nations. Spain dominated Europe and the Aztecs ruled all of central Mexico. But the conquistadors had not come such a long way to forge an alliance. They were after gold for themselves and territory for Catholic Spain. They achieved both against overwhelming odds. Within a single week, Cortes executed a bloodless coup and took Montezuma prisoner. A war ensued, which lasted only 22 months. After the Spanish victory, the Aztec religion was outlawed, Christianity was imposed, and the Indian Empire became the property of Spain. They built their own capital city, Mexico City, right on top of the ancient Tenochtitlan. They took the stones, basically, uh, they raised the major buildings and used those stones for their own colonial buildings. Spanish colonists all but wiped out Aztec culture apart from these ruins. Archaeologist Eduardo Matos has been guiding the dig at the Templo Mayor site, which was only rediscovered in 1978. You could see how many levels or sections had been constructed. We found the places where the offerings were located, and something very important, we understood the real symbolism of the Templo Mayor. Not surprisingly, a considerable number of sacrificial human remains have been found at the site. But Matos is sensitive to what he feels is a macabre fascination with this side of Aztec culture. We should clarify that human sacrifice existed in many previous societies. 